Hello, and welcome again to Ye Old Kitchen. I've combined two things I really love doing. Dungeons and Dragons and cooking. And I'm using recipes from the official D&D cookbook, Heroes Feast. Today, I'm going to be making a recipe called Orcs Bacon. Now, despite the name, it is not made from orcs, but rather for orcs, or more specifically half orcs, very popular with that type of people. Today's recipe comes from uh, the Green Dragon Inn in the city of Greyhawk, which is a very uh, famous tavern for adventurers. And although uh, the recipe in the book is fantastic, I'm going to tweak it just a little bit with my own special type of flavors. So, let's take a look at the ingredients, shall we? We're going to have about a pound of thick cut bacon, three tablespoons of light brown sugar, half a teaspoon of black pepper ground, a two, uh, well about a tablespoon of crushed red pepper, and that's why I'm putting that in there. It's not in the recipe, but I like a little more extra bite to it. A teaspoon of garlic powder, and this is roasted garlic powder, by the way. About two tablespoons of orange juice. And you're going to need some uh, nonstick cooking spray, a bowl to mix it in, some tongs, a brush, and something to mix it all together. Very simple, very easy. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees. That's a little warmer than the recipe calls for, but I like it extra crispy, okay? So we're going to do that. And when you put the bacon on the sheet, you're going to put some foil down. You're going to take a rack and spray it with the non-stick cooking spray. And then you're going to put the bacon on nice and close. You want to really, uh, you know, touching each other as, as close as possible, nice and tight to get that whole pound on there, okay? So what we're going to do now, we're going to take our bowl. We're going to take our ingredients. I've already pre-measured them as you can see, isn't that pretty? And we're going to go ahead and put them right in here. There we go. We're going to take the orange juice. I'm going to put that in there. There we go. The orange juice gives a really nice citrusy flavor. And believe it or not, the garlic powder, the pepper, and the brown sugar all work together really nicely. Now, some halflings are known to also layer this with some maple syrup just to take the edge off a little bit, but I'm not a halfling. All right, stir that up till it's nice, nice and well mixed. There we go. Then we're going to take our brush and we're going to apply it, but first, before we apply it, we're going to actually put it in the oven and let it roast for a good, oh, I'd say about five minutes or so. Maybe, well, let's do 10 minutes. We're gonna do 10 minutes in the oven, and you want the rack in the center of the oven, okay? So we're gonna put that in there, and we're gonna come back in about 10 minutes. Hi, and welcome back. Well, it's been about 10 minutes, Let's go ahead and pull this out of the oven. Maybe we can hear it already crispy. Oh, look at that, beautiful, beautiful. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our mixture and do a light brushing over the bacon. Making sure we get a good coating. Oh, it smells really good. We're gonna use about half of the mixture I tell you, I don't care what game world you're in, bacon is fantastic. There we go. Give it a nice little coating there. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and put it back in the oven for about five more minutes, okay? So we'll see you back in five minutes, folks. Hey, folks, and welcome back. Well, it's been about five minutes. Let's go ahead and pull them out of the oven. Oh boy, look at that. I wish you could smell this. It's fantastic. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our tongs. Oops. We're going to take our tongs and we're going to flip them over. Really good stuff. I mean, who doesn't like bacon? Well, vegans, I guess. Ah, there we go. 
Now remember, you want thick bacon, so it uh, really comes out the way it's supposed to. Otherwise, it might, uh, might be too thin and burn up too quickly. I don't know about turkey bacon or whatever else they have there, but this definitely is uh, the right bacon, not Canadian bacon. Although I suppose you could use this uh, glaze on other things as well, too. There we go. Nice. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the rest of the glaze on here. Make sure you get a oh, nice coating. Now what you could do too, is you could double the recipe for the glaze. And, make, and you put a little extra on there if you like that. But you want it nice and glistening. You want the bacon nice and glistening. Show you that the, uh, the glaze is adhering well to it. Don't be afraid to get it all on there now. There we go. All right, Ooh, my mouth is watering. Okay, we're gonna take it, we're gonna now put it back in the oven. I'm gonna put it for another six minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Now remember, kitchen uh, ovens vary with different times and powers and stuff. So, you know, keep an eye on it. Uh, don't want to go past more than five, six minutes without really looking at it. You don't want to get burn it, uh, but you want it to crisp up really nice, okay? So we'll be back in just a few minutes and hopefully try it out. Hi folks, and welcome back. Well, it's been a few minutes since we put the bacon in the oven uh, for the last time. And I actually ended up watching it and I had to put it in for a few more minutes. So about another 10 minutes uh, to get it really to the crispiness that I wanted to. And I think it's because it's on a rack instead of sitting in the fat itself on a, on a foil that it takes a little bit longer to cook up and the glaze might have something to do with it too. So let's go take a look at it here. How gorgeous is that? Okay, look at that bacon. You want to serve it warm, but I'm going to put it on the pl a plate just for a few moments to cool it enough so that it really gets uh, nice and stiff. You don't want it too, too uh, chewy, unless you do. I mean, if you like your bacon chewy, then by all means, you know, eat it as such. But I like mine a little more crispy or a little stiffer. So I'm going to put it on here, let it cool just for a few minutes until you can see where it starts to tighten up. Now because you're cooking it on the rack and not directly on the pan, uh, there's no real need to uh, put it on uh, like a paper towel. Sometimes you would put bacon on a paper towel to soak up the rest of the fat. But if you do that, uh, you're going to get, it, the glaze is going to stick to the paper and you're not going to want that. So definitely uh, keep it on like a plate with some of those uh, smooth, hard surface. You always, I can tell already it's starting to uh, get nice and stiff there, so let that do that. I'm going to put this aside. There we go. So after letting it rest for, uh, for a few moments on, the, on a nice cool plate, what you can do is you can take it. You see, it's, it's, it's still, I should probably wait a few more minutes, but I don't want it to take up too much of your time. Go ahead and uh, Put it in some kind of uh, container, cup, or bowl, or whatever you'd like to serve in. I'm going for the whole uh, medieval look here, so I'm putting it in my stein right here. And if you have uh, bacon fans in your home, your friends that love bacon, let me tell you, you cannot go wrong with this recipe. All right, you really can't. It is to die for. See, that's kind of like the stiffness you're kind of going for. And there you go. And there you go, folks. Orc bacon. Delicious snack anytime. Breakfast, dinner, night, whenever. And again, recipes come from the official Dungeons & Dragons cookbook, Hero's Feast. Until next time, 
Please tell your friends about it. Subscribe if you'd like. And we'll see you next time in Ye Old Kitchen. Until then, fare thee well.